Do you ever wonder where a bird goes after it flies away? What about a snake as it slithers off? Just like you and me, all animals need a place to live, a shelter. A shelter is different from a habitat. Habitats contain many different types of shelters. Take a look at this habitat here. How many different shelters do you think are contained in this habitat? Shelters can take many different forms, customized to every animal's different needs. Some animals build their own shelters, while others use what the habitat already provides them, like tree hollows. Either way, it's important that an animal's shelter provides them protection from predators, weather, and gives them a safe space where they can raise their babies. At first glance, you may miss them or want to brush them aside, but wait! Web service shelter for friendly neighborhood spiders. There are many different types of webs that are spun by different types of spiders. Some are orb-shaped, some come in sheets, and others form artsy tangles. Spiders will use some sections of their webs to catch prey, but also to create shelter with a combination of their webs and the habitat around them. Let's move our focus to the ground. Burrows can appear almost anywhere there is dirt. They offer a cool place to rest out of the sun, as well as intricate mazes to allow the residents to escape from enemies. Because of this, burrows serve as a popular shelter for many different types of animals, including gophers, lizards, voles, and weasels. The list goes on and on. Next time you're out walking, see how many little burrows you can spot. Now, let's peer into this bush. This may look like a pile of sticks, but if you look a little closer, you'll see that it is actually a carefully constructed mansion fit only for wood rats. Like humans, dusky-footed wood rat nests actually have different rooms for different purposes, with hallways, rooms for sleeping, eating, and even bathrooms. These nests can be as much as seven feet tall with multiple stories and stand for over 60 years with one generation passing down the nest to the next. Take a look up in this tree. Do you see any shelters? Good eye! It looks like there's a nest, but what kind of animal do you think is able to get up there? Like wood rats, birds gather little branches, lichen, leaves, and grasses to create a sturdy nest on a tree, on the ground, or any other place a bird feels safe. As we've seen, animal shelters are everywhere, and they're really exciting to find, but we need to be mindful about how to approach them. Imagine being a toad and seeing something huge running toward your home. That would be really scary. So we have to make sure we keep this in mind so we don't scare our animal neighbors. It's important to think of how we, as humans, can live in a way where we are respecting our animal neighbors in their homes. Here are some ways to do that. To find animal shelters, find a spot outside and be still and quiet. Use your senses and look for clues. You can use your ears to hear bird songs. You can also tune into rustling sounds nearby to track animal movement. You can use your eyes to look at the ground for animal trails, fur, feathers, or scat. You may also be able to spot some animal tracks. These might be from a bunny hopping into a bush. However, avoid touching any of the animal shelters you find, as human touch and smell can stress out wild animals. If you see a nest, avoid visiting it in the morning and at dusk, when the mama bird might be more active. Visit in the afternoons and limit your visit to under a minute. Be mindful when you walk and make sure you aren't stepping on an animal's home. So, why do we need to preserve all these wild communities? Well, imagine if you were only able to eat one thing. You wouldn't be able to survive because your body needs many different things to get all the nutrients you need to live. The world around is the same. It needs many different plants and animals to survive. A wide variety of species will cope better with threats like pollution or natural disaster because even if one species is affected by a threat, the ecosystem as a whole may be able to adapt and survive. This is called biodiversity, and many scientists use it to measure how healthy an ecosystem is. A healthy ecosystem cleans our water, purifies our air, and maintains our soil, regulating the climate, recycling nutrients, and providing us with food. Sometimes, humans can help out animals by offering shelters and materials to build them. Check out this birdhouse that some students built. Listen carefully to the chirping baby birds. Can you hear them? You can also do this yourself or offer materials for the animals in your area. 
First, we can create an offering pile outside with found materials so your neighborhood birds can easily find them. Here are some do's and don'ts for this activity. You can offer undyed cotton or wool string or yarn in short lengths, dry leaves, or small amounts of shredded paper without glue, staples, or other residue. Materials that should never be provided for nesting birds include long lengths of string or yarn that can tangle or choke nesting birds and chicks, materials that won't degrade, such as plastic strings and nylon ribbons, perfumed or chemically treated materials, such as dryer lint or flea-treated pet fur, Natural, degradable nesting materials are always best because they will be the most familiar to birds and most flexible as nesting needs change while hatchlings grow. Gather your offerings into piles and leave them in your backyard or other places accessible to birds. You can also try creating your own shelter using found materials in your house. Think about what makes a good shelter and make sure your shelter is close to food while offering safety from predators or parents and bad weather. Here's an example of a shelter that we built in our own house. You might be surprised how much diversity can be found in your own backyard and neighboring outdoor spaces. Send us your questions and comments below. If you enjoyed this video, share it on Facebook and Instagram or email it to a friend. Share your findings with your virtual community and tag us at MeEarthCarmel with the hashtag GrowCookExplore. See you in the next video.